gods of ancient Mexico nearly all ruled over the sky and air. That was because Mexico, then as now, was an agricultural country. Out of the sky and air came the sunshine and drought, rain and floods that determined the farmer's life. To the sky and air, he naturally prayed for blessings on his crops and animals. Then the Spaniards came and taught him that in that same sky is one God, merciful and just. He prayed the more. When days of plenty did result, he took pains to show his gratitude. And so one finds that the seasons changes in Mexico, so profoundly affecting the prosperity of the land, are marked by mass religious observances, exceedingly colorful and interesting. These particular scenes are of such an event at Cholula, about 50 miles southwest of Mexico City, on the road to Puebla. It is that day in spring when the family cattle don their finery, not only ribbons, but paint, and all domestic animals, whether they like it or not, are taken to church to be blessed. Shameless hussy. The purpose is that livestock shall multiply, but the farmer must do his part. He must treat his animals well. He tries to do so, and regardless of their increase, he sends them all to church. The donkey is a fine fellow after all, and multiplication is secondary even for the goat. In the same way, praying for more armadillos in Mexico would be like a Kansas farmer begging for more woodchucks. You'd be self-conscious too. Then there's something about a boy and a dog. There's pride in the poultry too. Ever see a rooster with earrings? In Mexico, la paloma means the dove. It is easy to say smart things and to smile indulgently at this and that, but through this simple ceremony shines that light of simple faith which in the last extremity will prove our salvation. As the elderly priest appears, we see a great surge of emotion, a prevailing eagerness to catch the drops of consecrated water. But water or no water, the blessings fall on all, people and dumb beasts alike. time of blessing, and also a time of celebration. <clears throat> blessing and celebration for the bounty that is the Lord's. Let us turn southward for an even longer flight across the narrow foot of Mexico to tropical Tehuantepec. Let us telescope time as well as space. We have seen the people praying for a fruitful earth. Now let us see how they feel after their prayers have been richly answered, after the harvest. The occasion this time is the fiesta of the nativity. In a land where the rule is always cleanliness before godliness, the people have completed their ablutions at the waterside and are coming into town. Preparations for the event have long been underway. And soon the main streets of Tehuantepec will be crowded with men, women, and children, uplifted by the fiesta spirit. And all these painted gourd bowls carried on the head. Let's ask the ladies if there's any special meaning. Telling us to look for ourselves is not very helpful. Still, filled with tempting cakes, ripe fruit, and little flags. Oh well, we'll probably find out later. They dress up the cakes, why not the people? Fancy costumes, go with a fiesta. Oh, sorry, of course. Naturally, they're going to stay at home till festivities begin. Lovely, aren't they? Uh, the costumes, I mean. And that necklace, made of gold coins minted by Uncle Sam. It's a popular idea with the young ladies in Mexico. And how do you like these costumes? I'll have to tell you about them later, though, because just now it's too close to starting time. A 
Up our way, we'd say that these boys were raising the devil. In Mexico, they're trying to scare the devil away. First ones really to get going are the fishermen. The fiesta gives them special privileges. And as the old saying goes, when one girl won't stay in the net, there are plenty of other good fish in the sea. Only these uncaught fish are otherwise occupied just now, preparing for the big parade. It will all get going presently when devotions have been completed in the church. After all, this is a fiesta of Thanksgiving. At last, the procession begins. Relatively small at first, but at different places along the route, there will be notable additions. And now, as to these costumes. The story goes that years ago, an English ship was wrecked on the coast. A lot of children's dresses were washed ashore. They were beautifully made of fine materials. Only their pattern was completely foreign to Tehuantepec. The women knew they were dresses, but never dreamed that they were intended for children. They put them on over their own heads and set a fashion. Maize has always played so large a part in the life of the Americas that one is not surprised to see this many corn maidens, or men with corn for that matter. Being a harvest festival, no painted floats could be more beautiful than these simple carts laden with nature's bounty. In a town beside the sea, fishermen naturally are conspicuous too. A real fish wouldn't stand the heat. The ladies are shy, spectators as interesting as the paraders. Aha! Now, perhaps, we'll learn more about those bowls on the head. The spectators are shouting for them. Bateas, they call them. They're stopping. That's right, they are. One begins to understand. Look, some of the bateas are already empty. They're giving the cakes and fruit to the crowd. Of course, that's it, a symbol. The bounty of the earth shall go freely to all the people. 